What's up, beautiful Scorpio people? Welcome to your tarot reading and your astrology talk here at the Intuitive Teacup. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this week. We're going to talk a lot about the planets and what's going on in the sky because uh, there's just so much and there's some juicy stuff. There's some really good stuff that I'm excited to talk about. So uh, if that's not your bag, I'll see you next time. Um, this is, We are going to do some tarot as well. It's going to be about half and half. So um, stick around. It, it should be cool. It should be fun. I just feel more guided to do that. Um, please come into the tarot reading with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to maybe learn something and better yourself. If the messages that come through don't resonate for you, feel free to push them aside. Um, assume they're going out to someone else. It might just connect with you at a later time or date. Do remember you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Again, this is a general reading, guys, so not everything will resonate with you. That being said, for this week specifically, because we are doing astrology talk, um, check your rising sign. That's going to be more important, more significant than your sun sign. So do a quick Google search. You need to know your uh, place and time of birth, obviously your date of birth, and that will generate your rising sign. That is the video you want to watch this week. Of course, anyone is welcome into this reading, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Venus, etc. Um, but yeah, rising sign specifically. Um, that is also interchangeable with with the first house placement so if you're looking at a zodiac wheel whatever zodiac sign fills your first house that is the same as your rising sign okay um what else do i need to tell you that's it let's hop in um love me my scorpio gangs i'm, I'm happy to be back thanks for your patience had a little bit of a health crisis but uh <laughs> but i'm working my way through so i'm happy to be reading for you guys i love reading for scorpio Let's set the intention here and now to get my Scorpio gang out there watching some clear, helpful, and insightful messages for wherever they are at in their spiritual path. All right. Here we go. So, happy Taurus season. First and foremost, the sun is in Taurus, and that is particularly significant for you guys because that is your seventh house of long-term contracts, partnerships, and relationships. Yes, it can be business contracts, but it can also certainly be romantic contracts. You guys were the superstars of the last full moon. We had the full moon in Scorpio, which was squared by Pluto. Um, full moons always bring more clarity, illumination, and, and an ability to sort of do deep reflection on wherever that full moon is taking place. So because it's in Scorpio, in theory, that's going to be your first house of, of self and, and how you move forward in the world and how you present yourself and sort of the lens through which you see things. With that square to Pluto, which was happening in Aquarius, and, and Pluto will be in Aquarius for a long time, there may have been some challenging aspects in regards to you and your personal life. Um, maybe power dynamics, whether that be in, again, private life, family dynamics, um, something to do with homes or contracts versus who you are out in the real world. Um, you know, you're assigned very closely associated with Pluto, which is the biggest... Um, the biggest energy of major change and cathartic transformation, it, it almost has like a purging element, like we have to eliminate everything in our path that's standing in our way in order to kind of rebirth ourselves and, and create something new, right? To breathe new life into something. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of that is very familiar to you. And, um, you know, Pluto's not for the faint at heart, but because it, it's so strongly associated with Scorpio, you know, typically you guys are, are, are here for it, right? You're, you're ready for the change and the transformation. Now, that being said, it's not always easy, um, but I think you are a sign, generally speaking, that, that is able to deal with crisis quite, uh, quite well, because, you know, again, typically, um, that's been a theme or a pattern in a lot of Scorpio's lives. So it's like, yeah, you, you guys have an intense stamina, right? As, as a fixed sign, you're able to kind of hold space for that and work your way through time and again. So obviously that, that full moon already happened, um, but kudos to you guys because it wasn't an easy one. Um, but hopefully it's clearing out things and, and making way for what is truly uh, meant to be yours, what's in your path, what's in your alignment. Um, now let's talk about the good stuff, right? And I mean, again, not to say that's bad, but you know, I mean, Pluto stuff isn't easy, right? I, I'm not here to sugarcoat it. That's just simply a fact. And every single zodiac sign is experiencing that. Um, but for you guys specifically, there's a lot of transformation and change going on in that fourth house. Roots, home, legacy, ancestry, land, property, private life, family dynamics, etc. All right, the good stuff. So, Venus is going into the planet, uh, I'm sorry, into the sign of Taurus, which again is your seventh house of contracts and relationships. Venus brings ease, it brings pleasure, it brings joy, it brings, um, I mean, 
I don't know if sexuality is, is a, the best phrase for it. That's more Mars energy, but pleasure and relating. Let's put it that way. So um, with Venus moving into the sign it loves to be in Taurus, right? Taurus is a Venus ruled sign. You're going to be able co to connect with other people with more ease and harmony and grace in the coming months. So um, Venus moves into Taurus, I believe on, um, believe on, oh my goodness, I already forgot, the 29th maybe, April 29th. You guys are going to have to fact check me on that. But anyway, um, so that's going to be lovely. In, enjoy partnerships, enjoy relationships. Uh, again, there isn't going to be the strain and the struggle that there was with Venus and Aries. There's a lot of like kind of, uncomfortable fighting dynamics, right? Venus doesn't like to be an Aries. It's a Mars ruled sign. So anyway, we're going to enjoy that transit. Not only that, we have the Ju uh, Jupiter Uranus conjunction also happening in your seventh house of partnership. Uranus is the planet of unexpected shock, changes, rebellion. It can be flashes of genius and insight, but ultimately it liberates us. Um, and it's sort of an earth shattering, uh, earth shaking type planet. When it meets up with Jupiter, Jupiter is a planet of blessing and growth. It's very much associated with money and faith and spirituality. Um, sometimes it's children, buoyancy. It's, it's kind of lighthearted energy. So in, in dynamics and relationships specifically, you may have found yourself in a situation where someone in the mix is wanting to break away in order to pursue something that they feel is more in alignment with their future and their destiny, but but brings more joy, right? I, I think there's sort of a, or has been sort of a struggle in the sign of, of Taurus about going after what we want and we need and maybe not necessarily sacrificing it always for other people. Um, Jupiter does rule your fifth house of dating. So there, there could have been an ending to a relationship and, and maybe a slow launching yourself back into, um, back into dating. Um, or also, again, maybe something to do with how you make your money because Jupiter also rules your second house of, uh, <laughs> of money, <laughs> of values, of resources, of, of wealth, how you make your money. So anyway, um, I would say in Taurus, you know, the, the, uh, sorry, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction did happen, um, on April 20th. But if you didn't feel some sort of exciting spark or some sort of exciting launch or release or, or you know, uh, liberation, break away for, for joy and pleasure, it's not to say that isn't going to happen because it's happening in an earth sign. Sometimes that builds slowly. It's, we don't always feel it instantly. Um, I think there's the possibility of that with Uranus involved, but like you didn't miss your blessing there. So if you were like, oh, nothing cool or exciting happened to me that day, don't worry. Like it's, it's going to happen. You're, you're still going to feel it. Um, and then last but not least, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, similar to Venus moving into Taurus, which uh, long-term long -term contracts, seventh house partnership, relationships, again, enjoy it. There's, there's going to be like a nice comfortability and luxury. And I, want, I wanted to use the word fluidity maybe because, you know, the Scorpio stuff, but ooh, that's, that's going to feel good. That's going to feel good. More harmony in how we relate. In addition to that, Mars is moving into Aries, um, which again, same thing. Mars likes to be in Aries. It kind of doesn't know what it's doing in Pisces. Mars is all about where we put our action and our energy and our stamina. It's not to say being in Pisces is bad for Mars. It's just, it's an unusual energy. So if you're putting action and energy into swimming or yoga or dance or art or meditation, um, that's a great use of Mars and Pisces. But Mars typically is kind of like the action adventure warrior thing. So in Pisces, which is all about, hey man, can't we just like love and get along? That can be a challenging energy sometimes when we're trying to move ahead. It feels like, it feels like you're running into the water and like the waves are giving you that resistance. That's very Mars and Pisces. When we put Mars in Aries, it's like race car driver. It's like, you know, throttle, ignition, go. So with Mars moving into your sixth house of Aries, again, for my Scorpio risings, a lot more action and energy and stamina regarding your daily routine, your health, your wellness, um, your sort of work routine, uh, stuff going on at work, you know, things with your coworkers, uh, things of that sort. It just, it's going to feel like we're finally starting to gain some progress. Mercury, Mercury was retrograding in the sign of Aries. So with those sixth house matters, daily health, wellness, routine, your regiment, etc. even things with your pets, actually, that's sixth house too. 
That may have just been wonky and weird and like miscommunications, a need to go back and redo things, re-examine things, recreate, renegotiate. You know, with Mercury, it's a lot of times, you know, our words aren't landing correctly with people. So Mercury is going direct, which is going to be amazing. Mars is moving into Aries, Venus moving into Taurus, like hell yeah. So not to say that all of you have been driving the struggle bus. Um, I certainly have. But um, I think a lot of people have. I think April astrology was pretty intense and pretty crazy um, but I'm here to say enjoy May there's a lot of things for you guys to look forward to um, so YOLO let's do it all right what does the tarot want to tell my Scorpios this came out so I feel like this is significant the magician yeah so you are the creator of your destiny this is the master manifester essentially the magician says you have all the tools available to you on your table right you have all the aces here you have the cups the swords the pentacles and the wands right so anything that <coughs> excuse me Anything that you feel called towards or feeling like you want to lean into or create or um, experience in life, the universe is essentially saying you have our blessing, but it is going to take a little action and energy on your part. But remember, you're, you're always co-collaborating with, with some higher power, right? The divine universe, God, source, spirit, whatever, whatever word you like to use. But I almost feel like there's a... There's an acceptance, there's a protection, and there's like a blessing energy of, yeah, move forward with this. It's an excellent card of communication. So for those of you who've been struggling to communicate your truth or struggling with, again, conversations with important people in your life, signing of contracts, I think there's something about those are going to be more grounded. It's like he's pointing at the ground. There's something about we can approach conversations or in the way we process information or the way we express ourselves in a more practical way where we can actually like the seeds take route or root if that makes sense it's like there's more of an ability to have conversations and build upon them versus things that just again are confusing and not landing right with people why is the magician coming through? What's what's going on here? Mm, all right, so being at a bit of a crossroads and being able to better, it, this to me speaks about being able to make a better and more informed decision on how you want to move forward. It feels like you guys have been at a crossroads for a while. Um, I, I'm almost kind of hearing like, should I stay or should I go? And maybe you weren't at a uh, in a in a position where you were able to make an informed choice on. I mean, credit to you, like props to you, because I feel like you guys knew, and maybe it had to do with the Mercury retrograde. It's like you knew that change is kind of like coming through or coming down the pipeline, but it's like, I don't want to make any rash decisions right now because it does, again, it's not coming from an informed place. It's like, I kind of got to let this like play out a little bit and see where the pieces fall. I got to catch a vibe for what maybe other opportunities look like. It's, I'm almost getting this th that metaphor of like, you know, and again, I'm just throwing this out as a metaphor, but like the idea of like, you know, when God closes a door, he opens a window. It's sort of like you're starting to see the door close, but you're still looking around for the window to be opened. So you're not necessarily ready to jump ship yet. Or I think you're about to, though. Or And I want to be clear. It's not that you're all about to jump ship, but there's something here where I think the answer is becoming more clear and apparent and there's less confusion or there's less indecision i think that's really important too um oh my gosh towards happiness scorpio fuck yeah that's awesome that is awesome all right ten of cups is the happily ever after it's what feels the best and so I think this is both. I don't think this is making a decision completely based in logic, fata, facts. Sorry, let me try that again. Logic, facts, data, statistics, etc. That's the Mercury stuff versus completely ignoring the intuitive pulls, the intuition, um, just sort of the long term impact of what's good for my health, my wellness, my mental health, especially, um, you know, my joy, my abundance, my ability to uh, to be happy in, in life, right? It's almost like you're right in the middle. So you're trying to find that middle ground of, if this, say this is a work scenario, doing something that you love and makes you happy. But again, that, that like, you know, hashtag facts, it's like, but also pays the bills and allows me to live and thrive and, and you know, live a healthy lifestyle. It's both. And so maybe you're making minor adjustments or slight changes in your path forward, especially in your daily health wellness routine. Again, that airy stuff. Um, but for some of you, it's starting to show up and impact in, in long-term relationships. So 
for some of you, it's almost like you turned your back on, on a relationship or you felt pushed into a corner with some sort of important relationship in your life. <clears throat> and again, that could be romantic, but that could also be in, in regards to your work life. And I hope this makes sense to some of you, but it's almost like you were too stuck in the mental sector and lost touch with the feeling sector. Um, and you are a water sign, right? I would argue one of the most psychic signs of the Zodiac too. Again, Scorpio rising I'm talking about, um, but any placement in Scorpio. Um, it's like we got, we got too um, lost in the facts and the contracts and the writing and the details and the data but then at the end of the day, I'm just I'm sort of wanting to pose the question like, yeah, but were you happy? Like it might make sense on paper, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, in 10 years, are you going to look back and be like, wow, I'm glad I did that? Or again, was it sort of like I just keep hearing like put into a box or forced into a corner or feeling like maybe there wasn't a way out because you were like tunnel vision, um, like you weren't maybe seeing the forest from the trees because you were so in it. You were so emotionally attached to the narrative that you didn't see that there was actually a world of possibility right behind you. And that may have to do with relationships. Um, hey, so there's your soulmate card. There could be important conversations for those who are already with your person. Um, there could be important conversations about taking something into the future. Um, and maybe there was a little bit of um, digging deep in the self, a little bit of soul searching to be like, am I ready to make this long term commitment? Are we ready to get married? Are we ready to move in together? Are we ready to, you know, fill in the blank, have children, right? And maybe there was a lot of or maybe there was a need to kind of and I'm honest, I wanted to say like fact check. Maybe there was a need to kind of go through it and be like, can we afford this? Like, where's our money at? Where's our finances? Again, there's that Mercury stuff. Retrograding in your sixth house, it's like, you know, a, a house strongly associated with Virgo. It's a house of practicality. Like, can we make this happen? Does this even make sense for us? Like that sort of thing. And again, at the end of the day, like I, I think you can always talk yourself in, into a corner or or have this conversation and just keep talking in circles, right, with that infinity loop. But ultimately, I, I sort of think like the, the solution here is aligning to happiness. And I know that sounds so simple and maybe a little bit um, is contrite. Is that the word? I'm, I'm hearing that trite, maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, easy for me to say, right, because I, I don't know the intricacies of the storyline. But it, yeah, I'm sort of hearing though at the end of the day, the zoom out is is go towards what makes you happy. Um, maybe we don't have all the answers yet. Again, that idea of if you sense a door is closing and it's time to move on, it's about having faith that like there is a window open for you. Maybe you just haven't discovered it yet. So maybe there is a period of wait. I'm almost getting like a hangman vibe here. Um, and maybe some of you have already been going through that again with sort of this reimagining of what the picture perfect scenario could be that feels very like mercury retrograde stuff but i mean this has to do with partnership who who you want to collaborate with in any sense of the word it could be a creative or artistic collaboration as well <clears throat> yeah the high priestess says you already know the truth here you already know what's up um so if you're looking for answers um external to you it's probably just going to confuse you more you're not going to find it the high priestess says you always got to trust your intuition and maybe for some of you you did have to bring an ending to something in order to make room for new blessings but with that you're in that phase of like all right well i've purged it like you know i've um eliminated what isn't serving me anymore the ten of swords says it certainly changed you as a person being able to release this you know this is sort of like the I'm in the cocoon and I'm about to become a butterfly, but man, this wasn't easy and it's still kind of hurting and I'm still kind of questioning if this was the right move. It is. It is. You have to have faith and, and you have to trust in the divine. And again, the idea of looking for answers external to you, that's not the, the secret sauce. That's, that's not the key to your success here. Um, this is about trusting your gut feelings, the feelings, right? It's a Cancerian card. It's about the moon. It's about our instincts. It's about our intuition, especially in regards to partnership. So sometimes with the magician, there can be sort of a trickster energy. I don't get that all the time. Again, it depends on what the context of the spread here is. But some of you, it's like you just got to trust your vibe about that person um, as much as and I don't know which way to go with this. I'm going to give you the two scenarios as much as you want to believe that they're your happily ever after. If your gut is saying, yeah, but then you should trust that. Yeah, but. 
or the other. If it's like, I'm madly in love with this person, but we live in different countries and it doesn't make sense. But you know, like when they text me and call me and FaceTime me, like I feel so incredible. Well, maybe the universe is helping to orchestrate something about this where, again, that Jupiter Uranus like, happy magic comes through where, you know, Jupiter is associated with travel. Maybe this person is going to move to to live with you or maybe this, you know what I mean? Like I'm giving you scenarios here, but it's like you have to trust the feelings and use that as your inner compass and your guide. I will say when the Ten of Swords comes up, we have to acknowledge that something has come through that has permanently changed you as a person. And and it's what you do with that information now that's going to make a a world of difference, right? We can wallow in the misery of things we've lost, or we can kind of raise our vibration and be like, okay, I I have to trust that if something was taken away or or removed or um, something moved on, right? That was a natural organic development and a cycle in life. And again, having faith that it's making room for what is meant to be yours. This may have to do with like releasing an ex in order to make room for like your happily ever after person Scorpio I'm just putting it out there for for those who resonate with that um and and with the ten of swords sometimes there is this idea of of sort of like a an ego death something that we had built our world around something that we thought was true and and factual or or lasting and withstanding and you know forever all of a sudden it, it, it kind of contradicts that. It's sort of like, oh, well, I something that I had invested a lot of time, energy in, or so again, something I had built my world around, my life around, the job I thought I would be at until my retirement, all of a sudden, like, you know, I was let go, or that business isn't doing well, and, and they cut my hours, or something about that. It's like, oof, that I, I didn't really want that to happen. But again, the, the truth, the swords, the mercury energy, it's like, there's an acceptance here of maybe something about this is out of your control. Um, but also, it's not a, a, about giving away your personal power. Um, I think, I don't know, something about adaptability, changeability, flexibility is going to be important here for you. Um, and, and that can be extremely hard for anybody who has placements in the fixed signs, Scorpio being one of them, right? Because we like power, right? We like control. We 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 like to kind of, uh, I don't know if stay in our lane is the best uh, metaphor there, but we like the consistency. We like the stability. And something came through that kind of shook your stability. This kind of feels like a tower card to me. Um, yeah, there, there's absolutely been some sort of loss or some sort of, a need to sacrifice something. And I'm telling you this, it feels huge to you now, but in the long run, I think you're going to see that had this never exited your life or had you never been given this sort of, I'm going to, I'm going to use the word freedom or liberation from something that emotionally you were very attached to you. You were, you you know, you were hell bent on keeping that and, and holding on to it. I, I don't know that being able to release it. I think in time you're going to see like, oh, wow, like I'm actually really grateful that that, di- that that did happen. But I get that you might not be ready to hear that now. The five of cups indicates you're still kind of in the thick of the emotional processing of what's going on here. Um, but you are working your way through it. So so have faith, have faith. Um, trust your gut, ask for, ask for your angels or for, for guidance from the divine, uh, with the high priestess, maybe talk with your mama, uh, or, or your Cancerian friend. You have strong cancer energy here too. Uh, the magician can sometimes indicate Virgo Gemini energy as well. All right. Angel number card for Scorpio. Yeah, it's almost like to, to, to embrace your Ten of Cups, the happily ever after. We still have some work we have to do. We still have to put action into um, some sort of game plan to, to continue to achieve that, even if we may have altered or edited or, or adapted our overall game plan. But I think you're closer than you think. This almost feels like an important milestone in, in the progress you've made. And with that, there's something where it's time to let it go. It's time to release it because you don't need it anymore. Something that you think is absolutely necessary in your life, it's actually holding you back in ways that I don't think you fully realize yet. So your angel number this week is 14. It says, I am practical. That feels very Virgo energy to me. Um, You are open-minded and always try something new, yet you are wise enough to stop and think before you jump into things. This pragmatic approach helps ensure your time, attention, and efforts are meaningful. 
All right, Scorpio, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this reading. Um, please like, share, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook if you want more content from me. I appreciate you being here, guys. Sending you all the best, and I will see you soon for more tarot. Bye, Scorpio.